we we came in about 12 days into the disappearance uh initially to look after the huge challenge of dealing with media uh and the huge amount of armchair detectives um so-called experts and the vile comments that uh, your colleague tom just mentioned in that report there um but since then obviously with the new developments we've been working on logistics with them we're now looking at uh bringing jay home dealing with the massive paperwork uh translations and and logistics that need to be involved in that and making it what is just the worst time for them uh, as easy as possible. Um, and in doing this job for over 20 years, I've never seen a case that's attracted such vitriolic and, and hateful comments. Um, we, we're very lucky that we have freedom of speech, but with freedom of speech comes great responsibility. Um, you wouldn't say the things that these people have been writing uh, and, and posting to the world. Would you say that to this poor family who are now grieving, yet people are still putting it out there? And when people have someone missing in their family, it's natural to Google their name to see if there's any news, any updates. And what people are seeing is just this vile stuff that's utterly baseless almost 100% of the time. Uh, and it causes practitioners like uh, myself, uh, our organisation, authorities, people who are really trying to help, it causes them a huge amount of time in trying to get rid of it. And obviously, if someone sends us an email saying, I know where Jay is, he's here, we have to follow up every single lead. Now, that obviously takes time. Um, we, we've had just hundreds in the last week alone. Um, but ultimately, it hinders the search and it's terrifyingly horrible for a family that are going through this. It's a strange thing with, with the advent of social media these days, and we've seen it build up and ramp up over the last sort of five, six years, where it's now the done thing that wherever there's a real life crime drama acting out in front of our eyes on television, uh, half the population need to jump on Facebook, set up a Facebook group to say to tell the world what really yeah. happened in their eyes. And they might be sat there and Western Supermare, but of course they know more than any of the people working on the case. They know more than any of the people who are physically there. But this just goes on and on and it gets a huge amount of traction. And it's really worrying to the point where our charity um, thinks it's time that it has to stop. We're going to be talking to the Home Secretary in the coming weeks uh, and see what action can actually be done to put a stop to this, because it really is damaging and traumatising. Psychotherapist Lucy Beresford, uh, thanks for joining us, Lucy. Uh, I mean, what is going on here? As I said earlier, as I said to you as well, I understand why uh, people come up with theories of what's happened to missing people. Uh, there's no information, it's intriguing, it's a mystery, people are attracted to mysteries. Uh, and I think sometimes conspiracy theories, theorists get too much of a hard time. But when it turns nasty, uh, it, it really is alarming and uh, one of the uh, people searching for uh, uh, Jay Slater, a guy called uh, Matthew Searle, he's the chief executive of LBT Global, they help search for missing people all over the world. He's so furious about these conspiracy theorists who, who he said wrecked the search, he's vowed to track them down and bring them to justice. But what is going on, Lucy, uh, when we get into these situations? What, what's going through people's minds, these 600,000 people who joined the Facebook group? What, what what are they thinking? Where it starts to get really disturbing is the way in which, and social media amplifies this, is that it allows people to ignore the personal. It depersonalizes anybody who's involved in the story. So that would be Jay Slater himself, before we found out what had actually sadly happened to him, his family, anybody who was working on the search. These become people who are depersonalized by some of the people at the more florid end of the spectrum. Yeah. And therefore they speak and communicate about them and come up with the more outlandish theories as if they weren't people, as if they were characters in a novel. Well, again, I think there is a nasty streak in all of us. That's what we see in small children. You know, the primitive animal instinct that we all have gets ironed out of most of us 
by society. You're not meant to say things. You're not meant to behave in horrible ways to other people. But there is a lot of anger in people and they tend to find outlets for that anger. And if you find a story that captures the imagination, that seems to be something that you could say something about, you then feel this is my opportunity to vent my rage and to say things that are unpleasant. So it, it speaks more about your own in a world than it does about the scenario about which you're commentating and i think that's again what's so pernicious about social media there's no filter there's no sense in which i mean if you went if you went up to somebody in the supermarket and spoke to them in the way that some people speak on social media you would be escorted off the premises and rightly so but these armchair warriors or these keyboard warriors as they're sometimes known that again they are not connecting with the fact that the people they're talking about are real people. It, it is more a projection of their own angst, of their own dissatisfaction with the world, their own unhappiness and bitterness, one might say, that then gets projected out onto, in this example, the families of uh, and, and family and friends and perhaps mm -hmm. the, the wider community that was really dedicated in trying to find out what had happened to Jay Sater rather than actually coming up with outlandish theories. Then they is it is it getting worse? I think that's my question. I mean, we saw it. And I, I had never really noticed this before. Nicola Bully, uh, it was off the scale during the Jay Slater search. Uh, is this syndrome getting worse and worse and worse? Well, I was thinking about the the most um, the biggest parallel I could think of was the Madeleine McCann story, and I think that was almost the first example where we had a combination of 24-hour rolling news, which needed to fill uh, their their time yeah. and and seemed to have it with so many different threads to that story, and the amplification through social media, and in a way, the Nicola Bully uh, story which I think was maybe last year or 18 months ago, mm. was was the real uh, marriage of that. Mm. And the problem with social media is that it really amplifies everything. So I think people have gossiped about things since the dawn of time. Yeah. But in the olden days, you only had your little village to gossip around. And it was very unlikely that it would spread to the next village mm. because that was a horse ride and a day's journey away. Now, people can find out in Peru or Singapore, what everybody in London is thinking, just by checking Twitter or, or TikTok. And it, it's that rapidity and the lack of filter that's making it seem like this is something that's never happened before. It has happened before. It's just really, really noisy now. Yeah. Everybody wanted you know, Jay's story, I just mm. I didn't, I weren't aware of what was going on like back back in, like back here, I weren't aware of what was going on. I would have sat in a, a room in, in Tenerife getting terrorised by, well, tr trolls, just calls, we, we, we know where Jay is, he's done this, he's done that. Uh, all these videos that were going around with, you know, voice, uh, you know, like girls screaming Jay and oh, he's been stabbed on a beach and oh my God, he, yeah. the, the story, was, they were just unreal. I can't even describe the kind of human beings that they are, really, to sit and go through to all that trouble, all that effort to just ripped me apart mm. by trying to say that, you know, I mean, oh, he's, he's in a hall, he's chained up, and mm. oh, just disgusting, absolutely disgusting. I wouldn't wish it upon anybody that the torment that I've had to go through and that I'm still going through. I got a, I can't even remember where it on the, uh, um, what do you call it, what's that? WhatsApp message, yeah. A WhatsApp message. You'll never see your boy again. He owes me all this money. And I thought, well, what is going on here? We've only just, yeah. <laughs> we've only just arrived in Tenerife and like, what the hell? But yeah. I mean, I, want, I wanted to believe that, he, that he'd been chained up because at least that way I knew that he was still breathing somewhere. I wanted to believe he'd been kidnapped and he were being held because I thought, well, <laughs> you know, he's alive somewhere.
you know, anything. They were still breathing. That, that oh my, as, as horrible as it were. The, the first night, second night, I said to Zach, I said, there's a pen there and a, and a pad. I said, we'll start writing these numbers down within, what, half an hour? <laughs> we had a full, a full page. And then obviously, because I'm up, I, I do what I have WhatsApp. They were ringing me on WhatsApp, sending me images on WhatsApp and videos on WhatsApp. The ones that look like Jay that that have got he's got something wrapped around his neck that he's all beaten. I mean, somebody got sent a video and somebody sent it to the Spanish police actually of a young lad being beaten. The Spanish police actually did act upon that, but it wasn't Jay. Oh, they tracked it down, didn't it? Like but the, ten years ago in the, Russia. Yeah, they ended they up tracing the it. Down, yeah. yeah. It's like this these people kept frantically trying to contact me to say go to the beach. Mm. There's a video of um, somebody digging a hole on the beach and it looks like they've dragged a body into this hole and oh, you honestly you just you just wouldn't believe the stuff that we got sent. You know, and you're thinking, oh my God, and you're watching it, and you're watching it. You know, I mean, mm. Spanish police did give us a private number to WhatsApp any anything that we thought relevant. Well, probably kids, you know, like young kids. I mean, you could tell weekend came and it was like, obviously they weren't at school. But I think if I'd have took every single one on board, that would probably be in a, a bloody locked up in a padded cell by now. There were one that that got reported, but it was just a young kid who lived miles and miles away. And I've still, I've got the, the letter there and I just think, is there any point now? Just loads of messages, just making his own story up really about Jay, that he'd been, that he'd been murdered and he made, made out that, that it were him that had pushed him. I mean, whoever thought it were a good idea to start all these pages, Facebook pages, Jay, Jay Slater missing, Jay Slater discussions, Jay Slater this, Jay Slater that, they just, do they, do, you know, do they not have jobs? I don't know. How do they find time to, to do these things? It's, it's shocking. The money is still sat there and I'm scared of even touching it, which I were right from the beginning. And they've had to kind of reassure me that, you know, these people donated because they wanted to donate, because Jay obviously touched the hearts of, of the nation and they wanted to help his family, which they have helped his family because obviously we, we stayed in Tenerife for six weeks. We all came out, we all funded everything because we obviously didn't know what what were ahead of us, but yeah, we've had, we've had to use some for accommodation and to stay there for all that time. Getting up to the capital, to you know, to the police station, going up to the funeral place. Obviously, we've got a, we've got funeral costs now. We've got the files not closed for repatriation, as I've said. He's got they've got a property. They've got things that they've kept for the post-mortem in Tenerife that we're still going to have to arrange for repatriation again. It's just, I don't know when it's... They don't know Jay, they don't know his background, they don't know his upbringing, they don't know anything about Jay, these people. Just mm -hmm. not all these people who were just saying horrible things about him, they weren't that person. They loved being me, his family, and they weren't a bad person. You know, people dragging up all things that they don't even know about when it was in court. Um, it was a, it was it was so loved by everybody. One of the things we've touched on is is the drugs trade, and people have suggested that he fell foul of a, a drug smuggling gang or cartel. What's your reaction to that? That again, that it's was made up the TikTok, sick, it? sick people um, putting voiceovers and you know the video of him on the dance floor and 
oh he's dropped a bag of drugs and that's in they've, they've had to take Jay to forfeit this bag of drugs being lost and it was just ridiculous ridiculous yeah. I would love to, I'd yeah. love to be a law against what people have done to our family I would absolutely love it um, something needs to be done because it was just vile I would like to pursue definitely yeah I just don't know how people can just get away with destroying people